Your Excellencies, Mr. Alessandro Iglesias Campos, Program Specialist Marine Policy and Regional Coordination Section, IOC UNESCO, the representative of IOC UNESCO and MSP Global Team, distinguished guests and participants, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon from Indonesia to all of you. On behalf of the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries, the Republic of Indonesia, may I take this opportunity to welcome you to the online seminar of Sharing National MSP Practices Worldwide, Indonesia. First of all, I would like to appreciate and thanks to IOC UNESCO for the opportunity that Indonesia can disseminate its MSP through this online event. Furthermore, the information and status of Indonesia MSP has already been published on the MSV Global IOC UNESCO website. As the biggest archipelagic state, Indonesia has developed and implemented marine spatial planning in order to manage and regulate marine, coastal areas, and small islands in sustainable manner. There are mandates from Indonesian regulation to develop and implement marine spatial planning as directed by law number 32 year 2014 on marine affairs, law number 27 year 2007, Junto law number 1 year 2000 and 14 on management of coastal area and small island and the law number 11 of 2020 on job creation. The job creation law is expected to respond to the investment and job creation issues by the simplification for spatial planning document. Several land-based spatial plan and marine spatial plan will be integrated and enacted through one regulation with the main objective to realize good government of marine and coastal areas. As a national authority which is in charge of marine spatial planning, the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries has achieved the establishment of National Marine Special Plan as Government Regulation Number 32 of 2019. One interregional MSP has already been enacted as Presidential Regulation Number 83 of 2020 on Interregional Area Joining Plan for Makassar Street. In addition, there are six ministerial regulations on marine spatial planning for outer small island has already established. The provincial government are in charge of managing coastal areas and small island joining plan where 27 of 34 joining plans have already been enacted as provincial government regulation. The remaining zoning plans are expected to complete by 2024. This event will present lessons learned and share good practices of Indonesia marine spatial planning. Hopefully, it can give positive contribution and inspire the development of MSV in worldwide. I wish today's discussion will run smoothly and success in attaining the goals of this event. Thank you.
Your Excellencies, the representative of IOC UNESCO and MSP Global Team, distinguished guests and participants to online seminar. Good afternoon from Jakarta, Indonesia. In this good opportunity, please allow me and my two colleagues from the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries of Indonesia to share our experiences in developing marine spatial planning, including the policy of Indonesia MSP and the implementation. Before we talk about the development of Indonesian MSP and marine licensing, I would like to share about how the policies of marine spatial planning in Indonesia. So the MSP could be applied as practical way to manage and regulate our marine in sustainable manner. Uh, please continue. As an archipelagic state, water areas of Indonesia is nearly four times larger than its land areas. So basically, ocean plays central role in Indonesia. It is estimated that 70% uh, of Indonesia's population live in coastal areas and depend on marine natural resources as their livelihood. The future of Indonesia is very much determined by the country's ability to manage its marine potential appropriately and sustainably. Continue. Indonesia is currently the second largest fishery producing country in the world after China. Apart from fishery product, Indonesian seas also have the potential for oil and gas, minerals, energy and various marine services, which are very important for a country's marine economy. The rich heritage of coastal ecosystem, such as uh, mangrove forest, uh, which cover about 3 million hectares, and coral reef ecosystem, which more than uh, 600 non-coral species and 37% uh, of the world's coral reef fish species, are very important to consideration for Indonesia to organize the designation of marine space in a harmony and balanced use. Please continue. Indonesia is currently still facing marine development pressure, such as uh, coastal and marine degradation, pollution, unsuitable fishing practices, overfishing, conflict of interest between sectors regarding the use of marine space, some areas experiencing poor coastal and marine management, climate change and human activities that lead to changes in ecosystem services and have impact on well-being, I mean on human well-being. All of those situations mean that Indonesia needs proper policy to manage marine resources in the marine space. Marine spatial planning is one is one of the policy to balance development and conservation interests, reduce conflict across sectors, and address cumulative effect of multiple human uses of the sun marine space. Continue. One of the important issues needs to be addressed in Indonesia is how to develop and manage marine resources sustainably. Practically, the three pillars of sustainability that are economy, social, and ecology, often conflicted and forced one of two of them to be outweighed. Marine spatial planning refers to a process of allocating multiple human activities into marine space into chief economic, social, and environmental objectives. Marine spatial planning is considered to be an effective tool to minimize the conflict among resources used and the bring about more effective marine management. And these are the objectives of Indonesian marine spatial planning. 
economically to ensure spatial and legal certainty in marine and fisheries investment to minimize marine spatial conflict between sectors and to improve the efficiency of marine resource and space utilization. Ecologically, to ensure the protection of coastal and marine ecosystem, as well as other important marine habitats. Socially, to ensure the certainty of space for coastal communities livelihood, and to enhance the harmony of marine space utilization between sectors. Continue. Indonesia has applied MSP as tool as to implement good governance in marine and coastal areas and consider that MSP can support the achievement of SDG 14. That's why then Indonesia has issued some regulation that giving mandate to implement MSP. There are law number 11 of uh, 2020. 2020 on job creation. It is the new regulation that gives some implication to MSP and land-based spatial planning. Law number 32 of uh, 2014 on marine affairs. Law number one of uh, 2014 concerning amendment to law number uh, 27 of uh, 2007 concerning management of coastal area and small island. The Indonesian Ocean Policy Mission, uh, that's stated in presidential, presidential decree uh, number 16, uh, 20 and 17. In addition, our ministry has a mandate that include marine conservation and marine spatial planning, which highlight sustainability, sovereignty and prosperity. Continue. In order to realize good marine management, we need further step or process visit planning itself. The process includes uh, implementation of zoning plan with reflect marine space utilization and then supervising and enforcement, then controlling the marine space utilization in terms of monitoring and evaluation aspect. Continue. In this slide, we see, uh, uh, I mean, uh, please to the previous slide. Yes, thank you. In this slide, uh, we see the coverage of planning area for Indonesian MSP. In general, the planning area cover water area. There are archipelagic waters, internal water, and uh, territorial sea and jurisdiction area, which include continental surf, contiguous zone, and economic exclusive zone. Each plan has different size of planning area. For example, national MSP cover all of Indonesian water, including jurisdiction waters. While provincial MSP, it only cover water up to 12 nautical mile within the provincial government authority. We hope uh, from this uh, uh, picture, uh, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, know about the boundary of uh, various MSP in Indonesia. Continue. In this slide, we can see about the land-based spatial planning as well as marine spatial planning system in Indonesia. Just like general plan of land based spatial planning in marine context, we also have national marine spatial plan with the same scale of land based national plan that offer a 20 years period and to be reviewed every five years. <coughs> then as operational plan of national MSP, Indonesia develops interregional MSP. We call a and particular national strategic area, MSP. This is a particular for the uh, project strategic national. 
<coughs> and each of them has different skill of planning and special concern of interest. All of this plan we call as functional plan, like in China. Yeah? <coughs> in general plan, <coughs> we are from the national MSP, then is province in Indonesia should establish provincial MSP as their authority. Many special planning, sorry, may I dream? Hierarchical from national MSP, then each province in Indonesia should establish provincial MSP as other uh, <coughs> boundary and uh, their authority. Marine spatial planning system in Indonesia has hierarchical level and also applies complementary approach between plans, which that means there should be harmony and coordination between their authorities. Uh, for example, in Indonesia, we have uh, 44 provinces yeah, uh, that should uh, <clears throat> prepare uh, spatial plan in the province level. It should be integrated and coordinated. Continue. Indonesia has various different skills of MSP, as you see in this table. One, National MSP, which established by central government with skill planning of one <coughs> come by 1,000, is mandate of law uh, 32, 20, and 14 of Merit 5. It has been enacted as a government regulation number 32 of uh, 20 and 19. Second, MSP of national strategic area established by central government with skill of planning one to 50,000 as mandate of law 32 and 2040 on marine affairs. It will be enacted as present presidential regulation. Until now, uh, we don't have uh, uh, finished with this uh, type of planning. Third, MSP of party Color national strategic area, uh, specifically in the outermost small island, uh, established by central government with skill of planning uh, one to 50,000 as mandate of law 32, the same with uh, the previous MSP. And number four, interregional MSP, uh, for example, in the Bay, Street, and Sea, uh, particularly uh, inter. Uh, region established by central government with skill of uh, presidential regulation. And the last provincial MSP established by provincial government with skill of planning one to 250,000 uh, to one and to 50,000. But uh, for the future, I think only one to 250,000. Yeah? As mandate of law number 27, uh, 20, and 07. Continue. For national MSP, considering that it has already enacted and implemented so in uh, 20 and 22 and 20 and 23, we are going to review and revise it prior to the integration to land-based national spatial planning. Second, interregional MSP. In the total, there are 20 plants or 20 locations, stride, bay, and uh, ship. It has been enacted one regulation of interregional MSP for Makassar stride. Nine documents have been completed and in legislation process. In 20 and 21 and 20 and 22, we are going to develop the remain, the remain zoning plan. And hopefully in 20 and 24, all of the interregional MSP will enact it by and implement it. Then in 20 and uh, 24,
revision for Makassar Siap MSQ. So it's like a cycle every five years. Uh, MSP for strategic national area, in total, there are uh, 20 age plan. It has been completed 16 MSP, but they are still in the discussion for the recent issue. Uh, in this, especially in this plan, uh, so many, many and cognitive issues. Uh, of its integration into land-based strategic national area spatial plan. Hopefully, all of the document will be completed during in this four years until uh, 20 and 24, of course, uh, the end of the presidential uh, period yeah, in 20 and 24, including the process of integration into land-based spatial plan. And then the outermost small island MSP, in total there are 111 islands. So Indonesia have 111 islands surrounding the outer uh, part of the uh, territory. It's quite many documents will be developed. Until 20 and 21, it is already uh, 57 location. Yes, almost 50% uh, yeah, uh, from the whole uh, location. Uh, uh, Competing for the document, several MSP are already enacted, become ministerial regulation, but the new update for the MSP that the outermost small island MSP will be integrated into land based spatial plan for the border state areas and will be legalized by presidential regulation. We, we wish all of the documents of this MSP would be completed for within the next four years. Provincial MSP in the total, there are uh, 35 plans, 34 plans. Until uh, 20 and 21, there are uh, 27 plans. They have already enacted to regional regulation. We call it PERDA yeah, in the province. Uh, uh, okay. Five plans have completed, and this year, two provinces are still developing their MSP. Provincial MSP also will be integrated into provincial land based special planning. And that uh, would be the agenda from 20 and uh, 22 until 2024. 20, uh, there are current issues related to marine spatial planning in Indonesia, where several MSP will be integrated to land based spatial planning. It is a mandate of job creation law that ratified by Indonesian president on 2nd November. Uh, 20 and 20, uh, job reaction law will mandate simplify regulation on spatial planning. So uh, it means that uh, in the ocean and in the land uh, become one uh, presidential regulation. One regulation will cover land and ocean based spatial planning, but it is not all of MSP, will be integrated into terrestrial plan also in all of MSP when we are. Uh, developing and doing planning process should consider the synchronization and harmonization with land based spatial plan. Okay, continue. Please. This slide show the type of MSP that should be integrated into land based spatial plan. There are national MSP, strategic area MSP, good national strategic area and a particular national strategic area in uh, outer small island. And provincial MSP, this policy for you has objective to, rela to realize good government of marine and coastal area. This is a new update related to Indonesian MSP that came up in the end of uh, 2020. And now we have trying to review some plan for the integration matter. Please continue. We, real, we realize that weaknesses are still formed and there are many constraints in developing marine spatial planning. Some important issues that need to be impassive for the development of marine spatial planning in Indonesia, as well as uh, the challenges that we may face, such as 
the development of three-dimensional of marine spatial planning and marine cadaster in order to support the implementation of emission MSP. Yeah, because uh, we know in the ocean, we can use from the top until the uh, until the uh, the the water in the basic of the ocean, and then the integration of land and marine spatial planning of as a mandate of law of the Republic of Indonesia number eleven number eleven of uh, twenty and twenty of Jakarta to realize good spatial planning. Issue that MSP does not only offer the promise of economic growth from increased investment opportunities, but also can achieve sustainable marine development. We also put concern about management of marine transboundary area to realize good ocean management. And probably it can be achieved by applying coordinated and collaborated marine spatial planning between neighbor countries. I think that's all of my presentation. Uh, so as you can see in the previous presentation is uh, all the area in Indonesia. We have already the MSP for the whole waters of Indonesia. But Mr. Suharyanto already explained that in the end, we will have approximately four MSP for all of Indonesia in various level. But in the highest level, we have one national marine special plan, and then under it, we have interregional marine special plan and provincial marine special plan, national strategic area marine special plan, and also outermost island MSP. So let me talk one by one about the technical uh, content and the process, uh, how we create those MSPs. So for the first, I will start with the National Marine Special Plan, which is already enacted by the government regulation of Republic Indonesia number 32, 2019 on Marine Special Plan. Next, please. Yes, thank you. So we have two considerations in arranging our national MSP. Those are 11 about on 2020 on job creation, 32 of 2014 on marine affairs. So this national MSP covers 6.4 million square kilometers. It's mean the whole area of Indonesia, which covers all the waters area and jurisdiction area in Indonesia. While the, while the scale of this MSP is one of one million. And the driver for this MSP is economic growth, conservation, and biodiversity concern. So there are three main growth as already mentioned by our previous presenter before. So we use MSP as the tool for escalating economic growth and also for conserving marine resources and environment at the same time. Thus, in arranging national MSP, all sectors are included. The initiator of national MSP is central government, that is Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. Next, please. And the content. So let me discuss about content now. The creation of national MSP is based on the vision to achieve sustainability, prosperity, and sovereignty. Two main arrangements in, in national MSP. First, marine special structural plan that include marine growth, sample center of maritime and network system of marine infrastructure, such as seaport network or and fishing ports. And second arrangement is Marine Special Pattern Plan. Marine Special Pattern Plan contain public utilization areas, conservation areas, sea lanes that include shipping lanes and submarine pipes and cable lanes, and also uh, particular national strategic areas. Conservation areas in our national MSP are designated at minimum 10% to support inter international commitment. 
So next, please. So here's the example of our national MSP. As we can see, it covers all the waters and jurisdiction area of Indonesia. And if you can see the blue lines here is the connected uh, sea lanes, uh, about shipping lanes, cables or pipes, and also migration route. And if you can see in the green lines, it is the conservation, the green polygon, I mean, the, the green area, is, it, it is a conservation area. And for the blue uh, polygon, it is the utilization area. So the whole area is already uh, regulated specially. Next, please. So our next uh, MSP is interregional zoning plan. As we that the professors, our previous presenters has already mentioned, we have 20 zoning plan for this kind of for this kind of MSP. So next, please. Now, what is meant by interregional areas are waters area that covers two or more provinces that can be as a bay, strait, or sea up to 12 nautical miles until jurisdiction area. There is an of four national MSP, but plus the national MSP itself. So the national MSP become the legal, uh, become the legal consideration for the MSP be, be below it. The planning area for interregional MSP covers seas, strait, and base up to 20, 12 nautical miles anti jurisdiction area, which regional area covers economic, exclusive economic zone, continental shelf, contiguous zone. The scale of this planning is one of 500,000, and this MSP is legalized by President the drivers or why we must create this MSP are economic growth, conservation, biodiversity concern, national security and sovereignty. Sector um, fisheries, marine conservation, marine tourism and so on depend on the characteristic of the site itself. And it is initiated by central government, that is Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. So next, please. So this is the content. Basically, the content is the same with the national uh, MSP, but in interregional MSP, it has more detailed arrangement. Uh, from the marine spectral, marine special structure plan and the marine special pattern plan. For example, in conservation, in interregional MSP, we already mentioned about the types of the conservation area. For example, we have three here as in the slide, a maritime conservation area, coastal and small island conservation area, and MPAS. And also, for example, in the utilization uh, area, we divide it into zones like fishery zones, tourism zones, oil and gas mining zones, and so on. So we already uh, make a more detailed information here. So the in this uh, content of the MSP, we also uh, make a regulation on control of a special utilization that contains zoning regulations and permit system. So we also have special utilization direction that contain main program indications and priority programs. The plan also contains direction for spatial allocation in provincial zoning plan, national strategic area zoning plan, and particular national strategic area zoning plan. What is important to be noted here that the spatial allocation for jurisdiction water refers and complies with the rules of international law. Next, please. Here's the our here's the examples of interregional MSP. As we can see in the picture, the location is in the Makassar Strait that covers waters of five 
provinces, and this MSP has been legalized to presidential regulation. Next, please. So the next MSP is provincial zoning plan. It's quite different from other MSU that I have already mentioned before. This provincial zoning plan is initiated by the provincial government. Since uh, our country covers by the seas and ocean, so all the provinces in Indonesia have the seas. So it's quite different also from the perspective of legal consideration for provincial MSP. It is the legal consideration from the law, law number 27 of 2007 concerning management of coastal area and small islands. And this MSP cover waters area in 34 provinces. The previous MSP, it is one, one of 250 thousand and one of 50,000 scale. The legal status of why we create provincial MSP because uh, the concern of con increasing marine activities that can have potential conflicts. So those activities and also investment uh, need to be regulated with the permit and approval system based on MSP. I mean, in, it is in the water area, of course. Sectors that are involved during the process of fisheries, marine conservation, marine MSP is provincial government with, uh, this is the important thing, is the, with the assistant to central government, which is Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. And next, please. Uh, our next, our next MSP is National Strategic Area MSP. This MSP is based on the national strategic values. So we have. 28 areas in our waters area that consider to have national strategic values. So this is why we initiate the MSP in the waters area for national strategic zoning plan. Next, please. The legal consideration for national strategic area MSP in this, uh, is the same with the legal consideration for the interregional MSP. That is law on job creation, marine, law on marine affairs, and, and national MSP itself. And planning area for national strategic area MSP cover 28 location based on economic interest, environment interest, or natural resources interest. The scale of this planning is one of 50,000. And national strategic area MSP is legalized by presidential regulation. And the drivers or uh, of for this MSP are national strategic values that can be in the form of uh, from the perspective of economic interest or from the perspective of conservation and biodiversity interest or from the perspective of natural, res natural resources protection interest. Sectors that are involved in this MSPs are fisheries, marine conservation, marine tourism, and so on. It depend on the importance and strategic values of the location. And the initiator of this MSP is central government, government that is Ministry of Marine Affairs and uh, Fisheries. Thing next, please. So what is our national strategic values? First of all, is our national sovereignty, defense and security, such as Outermost Islands, or marine borders area. And second, economic growth. There are some areas in our country that in the perspective of our national economic development is important, such as free trade zone, mega cities, and urban areas. Third, from the perspective of natural resources and high technology, such as national fish stock, renewable energy, and so on. And lastly, 
from the perspective of environmental function, such as conservation area, marine biota migration routes, spawning ground, sensitive area, and so on. So this is all the, from this strategic interest, our national strategic interest, we, then we make it, we identified the importance and the strategic values for those of those strategic in, national strategic interests. So, based on these values, we create the MSP for national strategic area. Next, please. The content basically is the same with another MSP. It. Uh, divided into two arrange two special arrangement that those are spatial structure plan and spatial pattern plan and also we have special utilization direction that content main program indication and priority programs also control over special utilization that is zoning regulation and permit system but uh, we have more detailed scale more detailed arrangement due to its more detailed scale. So the scale is one of five fifty thousand. So it is more detailed than uh, provincial or more detailed than uh, interregional or national. Next, please. So this is the example of of national strategic area MSP in Batam, Bintan, Karimun, it is based on the economic growth interest. Next, please. So our next MSP is the Outermost Island Waters MSP in our or, or, or in our legal system, named as Outermost Island Surrounding Water Zoning Plain. So basically, Indonesia has 111 Outermost Islands, however, some of these islands are clustered into one planning area. So uh, finally, we will have 51 MSP for those islands. So not all the islands, uh, I mean, not one island, one MSP, no, but there are many, uh, several islands that is uh, that closely geographically close and connected, and we make it into one uh, planning area. Next, please. So the, the legal consideration is also the same from, from another uh, central government MSP. And the planning area for outermost island waters covers 111 outermost island and the surrounding. The scale of this planning is one of 50,000. And outermost Island Waters MSP is legalized by presidential regulation. However, before 2020, it was legalized by ministerial regulation, but now it is legalized by uh, presidential regulation. So the challenge is, is how to make a shift from ministerial regulation into the presidential regulation. That means bigger uh, challenges and bigger opportunities. The drive for this MSP are national sovereignty, defense, and security. It is our main approach because it is like, uh, located in the borders area. And prosperity and also environment protection. Sectors that are involved in MSP are foreign affairs, fisheries, marine conservation, marine tourism, and so on, based on the characteristic of the island and the waters itself. The initiator of Outermost Island MSP is central government, that is Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. Next, please. So as we can see here in the picture, this is the distribution of Outermost Island in Indonesia. As now we can see the, the dot and the circle. So the dot represents the island and the circle represents the cluster. So we have already made clusters for neighboring islands into one planning area. So there are 30 clusters for 90 islands, and there are 21 islands that are not clustered or 
We call it single islands. So in total, there are 51 MSP for outermost islands and the surrounding waters. Next, please. So this is our planning approach. As I have already mentioned before, there are three approaches. For the whole islands, the main approach is defense and security. And the rest is can be from the perspective for prosperity or environment protection. However, we have already uh, make uh, we have already identified that some islands are proposed for defense and security only, and others are focused on prosperity or environment protection or the combination of those two or three approaches. So we have identified which uh, island for the right approach. So it makes a difference in the MSP, especially for the zones and uh, connectivity. Next, please. So the content of the outermost island waters MSP is similar with national strategic area MSP and also another MSP. However, there is a unique arrangement in this in the special structure plan, that is the connectivity plan. Because most of these islands are remote and insular islands, so it is located very far from our main island. So we need to create a connection between these remote and insular islands into the main island. So this is a, a, a difference is, uh, or the uniqueness of this MSP with another MSP. Next, please. This is the example of Outermost Island MSP located in Maratua Island and Sambit Island. Uh, as you can see here, basically it is content to Outermost Island, Maratua Island and Sambit Island, but we make it into one planning area. So because they are uh, located uh, geographic, geographically uh, very close, not very far. So, and they are connected with the migration route of Skitartos and Sitasian. Next, please. So, how is the steps and the processes in creating MSP in Indonesia? And we will see right in the next slide. Next, please. So there are three approaches that we adopted in creating our MSP. First approach is scientific-based approach. Here we use uh, technology support for data collection, and we also perform field survey, and we also make some analysis based on the data that we have already collected. So this is the, the, the academic process or scientific based process here uh, important for us uh, objectively to identify the profile or the, the profile of the location that we need to create the MSP. So the second approach is the stakeholder participation approach. So there are many methods that we use in creating MSP with this approach. First is can be in the form of focus group, group discussions or participatory mapping, participatory planning, and public consultations. And also the, the third approach is institutional approach. Here in this approach, we will look at national policy and regulations, local policy and regulations, and also sectoral plans through FGDs, meetings, and so on. So the steps for conducting MSP in Indonesia can be found in Minister Regulation of number 32 of 2020 for MSP that is initiated by central government. And Minister Regulation of number 2023 20, of 2016 for MSP that 
is initiated by provincial government. So in the next slide, we will see how is the, the steps. Next, please. So this is the procedure for interregional MSP, national strategic area MSP, and outermost island MSP that initiated by central government. So basically, we have eight steps to conduct MSP in Indonesia from the preparation to legalization. After the preparation is finished, so in the preparation, we initiate working team, create work plan and working maps. So we also make coordination and consultations here. And after the preparation is uh, ready, so we make uh, data collection and data processing steps. This is a very important step here, data collection and data processing. So we can uh, we can have a, a, a close detail and close profile of the area and detailed view of the planning area. It depends, however, this is how we do it, how detailed it is, it is depend on the scale, of course. So we may have field survey also here and beside the study. Sometimes we have participatory mapping and planning for primary data if we need it. But however, sometimes for, for our outermost islands, MSC, for example, we we mostly we need the primary data because the data in the remote area is very difficult to ha to have and then the res the result of data collection is written in the initial document that contain potential uses uh, current uses issues objective policies and thematic maps so after we have initial document we will have public consultation to have agreement on the initial document. Based on this agreement, then the, the analysis, the plan making, the scenarios are created and they are written in intermediate document. So for first product, we have initial document that including thematic maps. For the second product, we have intermediate document, including also draft of spatial structure plan and spatial pattern plan. So this is the draft of plan that contains spatial structure and pattern plan, main program indication, zoning plan, spatial uh, and the maps and the, 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 the maps for the plan. So after we have intermediate document, we can, and then we have another public consultation. So this is after, so we have the second public consultation to agree on the plans. So, however, the, the public consultation can take several times, not only two times. It can take two or three or four or more, depend on the agreement that it achieved. If the agreement uh, has not been achieved yet, so we have to repeat the public consultation after the agreement is uh, achieved. So after the agreement on the plan is uh, achieved in the intermediate document, then we can make a final document or planning document. After, after the planning document is uh, arranged, then we can go to the legalization process. Next, please. I think this is our last slide. This is the provincial MSP uh, steps. Uh, basically, it is the same with the MSP that created by that initiated by central government, but there are addition for the local government to have a technical consultation to central government. I think uh, that I think it's all that we can present about MSP in Indonesia, and we are looking forward for the discussion. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and good uh, morning, good evening uh, for everyone outside. Uh, I'm uh, very happy uh, to have the opportunity to 
to be able uh, to discuss here, especially uh, for discuss about marine spatial planning and relation uh, with uh, marine spatial utilization uh, licensing, or we, or what we uh, know as a marine marine location license. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, as we know that uh, in the management of marine, uh, coastal, and small island uh, waters area, uh, there is a unity uh, put uh, planning, uh, planning, utilization, uh, controlling, and surveillance. Where one another is an inseparable uh, process. And uh, I think uh, MSP, marine special planning, plays an important thing. and uh, national level. Then supervision and surveillance is carried out, which include uh, licensing, incentive, and disincentive uh, program. Yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, marine licensing. Yeah, uh, marine uh, special utilization licensing uh, is divided uh, into two. Uh, one is uh, basic licensing, and the second one is business uh, licensing. Uh, basic licensing uh, include uh, land location license uh, uh, only from land and marine location license uh, for uh, waters uh, area uh, and then environment environmental impact assessment and uh, last one is uh, building construction uh, license and uh, second one is business licensing which is uh, especially for authority other uh, my uh, ministry, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries, uh, include uh, salt uh, production, uh, marine biopharmacology, uh, marine uh, biotechnology, sun condenser, uh, and then exploitation of seawater from one energy use, uh, marine tourism, and reclamation. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, marine licensing sequence. Uh, based on uh, Government regulation uh, number 24, uh, year of 20, uh, year of 2018, uh, regarding online single submission or OSS, and that regarding uh, to use of very special, uh, there are uh, licensing sequence. Yeah, there, there are uh, licensing sequence that must be done, including a license, uh, a license basic, uh, uh, namely. Marine location license, and then environmental impact assessment, uh, business uh, environmental impact assessment, and then business uh, license, and and uh, operational or commercial uh, license. And for example, uh, in this figure, uh, is the licensing sequence for submarine couple uh, installation. Yeah, uh, and then sequence from basic and uh, basic. A license and then uh, business license and the last one is uh, commercial or uh, operational uh, license. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, several regulation related to like location or all marine location license, uh, including uh, national law number one year of two thousand and fourteen, and then uh, national law number thirty two. Year of 2014 concerning marine affairs, and then national law number 11, uh, year of 2020 uh, uh, concerning of uh, sub creation, uh, and then government regulation and ministerial regulation number 54, year of 2020. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, marine location license, uh, there are several articles uh, from uh, three national regulation, uh, such as uh, national law number one, uh, number one, uh, year of uh, 32, uh, 2014, uh, especially for article 16, uh, 16 section one. 
that uh, every every person who exploit a space or spatial from part of the coastal and small island waters uh, exploit exploit permanently is obligated to have a location license. And then uh, the national law number 32 J yeah, of 2014 article uh, article 7 uh, 47 uh, section 1 yeah uh, every every person utilizing utilizing marine space uh, by uh, permanently in water area and jurisdiction area is obligated to have uh, location per, uh, location uh, license and last one, uh, the national law number 11, J yeah, of 2020, uh, concerning job uh, creation. Uh, every person who exploit a space from part of uh, the coastal and small island wa uh, island waters exploit permanently is obligated to have a licensing of marine utilization uh, or a profile of marine special utilization activities. Uh, we call that uh, persetujuan kesesuaian kegiatan pemanfaatan ruang laut. Yeah. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, National Regulation of Marine uh, Location license, Licensing, uh, uh, National Law Number 1, J of 2014. Uh, uh, there are several uh, artic, uh, several uh, part uh, part of Article 17. Uh, the one is the location license is issued based on the zoning plan. Yeah, this is uh, mean that uh, the 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 uh, um, main role or uh, important uh, important role of uh, MSP for support uh, uh, licensing marine location licensing. Yeah, and then. Uh, uh, second one, uh, the the issue of location license take into consideration. Yeah, several consideration uh, before uh, issue of uh, marine location license, uh, such as the sustainable of coastal and small island ecosystem, and then the public uh, the public access, uh, traditional fishermen, national interest, and right of innocent passage for foreign uh, uh, vessel. And uh, number third, the location license is issued for certain extent and period. Yeah. Next slide, please. Yeah. And uh, several uh, activities or location uh, license can uh, cannot be issued uh, in uh, corrosion uh, within the marine conservation area. Yeah, uh, we call that uh, Yona Inti pada kawasan konservasi. Yeah, and then uh, sea roads or arrow laut. Yeah, such as shipping lines, uh, migration marine life, as well as pipeline and submarine uh, cable uh, corridors. And then port area, public place, uh, as well as the area of indigenous people or masyarakat adat. Yeah, next slide please. The authority. Yeah, the authority of uh, location license or marine location uh, license uh, divided into uh, two authorities. Uh, one uh, uh, authority uh, by uh, national level at uh, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries, and uh, second one or authorities by uh, govern, uh, government, uh, provincial government. Yeah, and the uh, the Minister of uh, Minister of Government Affairs and Studies uh, has to authority to issue and revoke the location license uh, beyond 12 mile, nautical mile, and then uh, across border uh, within uh, two or uh, more uh, provin provincial and national strategic area, and then particular uh, national strategic area as well as national uh, uh, conservation area. And the government authority to issue and revoke, like uh, uh, revoke the location license in the coastal and small island waters under his uh, his uh, restriction uh, zero until twelve nautical mile. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries uh, has been developed uh, a new system 
that is already integrated uh, online single submission, national online single submission or OSS uh, to help uh, facilitate the business actor in applying for online license ap uh, application in easy and fast, uh, namely C handle. Yeah. Uh, C handle it's mean a uh, system perizinan berusaha perairan uh, dan laut. Yeah. C handle uh, C handle can be uh, C at uh, C handle .kkp .co .id. Next slide please. Yeah. Uh, beside uh, Marine, uh, marine uh, location license, uh, government and local government uh, uh, have uh, obligated to facilitate the issuance for uh, local and traditional uh, communities. Uh, yeah. So government and local government obligated to facilitate uh, local communities to uh, to apply uh, uh, license uh, uh, for license uh, to support uh, local uh, local uh, communities and traditional traditional communities yeah. next slide please yeah uh, we can we can currently have been developed uh, of the marine cadaster as a tool for uh, recording and administering uh, marine location license uh, responsi responsibilities uh, by national level and uh, provincial level. And uh, Marine Cadaster is a system, uh, is a cont continuation of the application of land uh, cadaster principles, which include uh, licenses, uh, boundaries, and responsibilities for settling in the marine activities. And the main goal of Marine Cadaster is uh, uh, legal certainty and legal protection and then provide a comprehensive uh, spatial data infrastructure. And the, the last one is uh, uh, for support uh, good uh, administration. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, yeah. and the following is uh, the view curve, uh, the marine cadastral system, yeah, that we are currently uh, uh, developing in the form uh, of the map location of lo uh, location license that have been uh, issued uh, put by uh, Ministry of Marine Fish and Fisheries and uh, provincial uh, government yeah uh, until no, until now still under maintain and equipped uh, with attribute data in the form of information and uh, on location and then type of activity year of permit uh, year of uh, license issuance uh, and uh, so on uh, and so on. Yeah. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, that is all, and thank you so much.